God for grace. Yes. Can I get amen there? Amen. Yes. In other well, in other words, uh, grace is. Am I on? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise. Okay. Hallelujah. But a uh, uh, mercy is withheld punishment. In other words, I deserve to be punished, mm -hmm. but the Lord withheld it from me. Yes. So you should say, thank God for mercy. Because there's a lot of us, hallelujah, Amen. should have been punished, but God didn't punish us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but why is it that we so quick to want to punish others? Wow. Why can't we give the same mercy that God has given us? Or why can't we give the same grace that God has given us? Amen. Don't you know you don't deserve forgiveness, but God gave you forgiveness? Yes. Right. That's grace. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. It's getting what you don't deserve. Because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're going to come out of uh, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 8 and 9. But grace. Hallelujah. Let's just stand for verse 1 and you may be seated after. And then once you do verse 8 and 9, just be bringing that back up. I like that. But grace. He said, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, which is three times, that it, that it might depart from me. You may be seated. Three times, this is Paul talking. And he said, was something that Paul was afflicted with. And he was afflicted with it for most of his ministry. But yet still, he continued in ministry, but he was asking God, could you remove this thing? Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we try to get God to remove stuff God wants to keep in place. Mm -hmm. Because if he remove it, uh -huh. you'll get out of alignment. Amen. Some things are, are brought into your life to keep you humble. Yeah. Some things are brought in your life to keep you meek. Some things are brought in life to keep you on your knees and keep you praying. Amen. Because as soon as that thing removed, oh, Lord, you, yeah. you, you, you just think you done arrived then. Because right, yeah. right now, because it's in your life, you pray more. True. Because it's in your life, you seek God more. Yes. Because it's in your life, you seek peace more. Yeah. So there's some things that's just going to stay there and keep you on. That's right. See, Paul went through a, a, a summation of his ministry in the first part of uh, the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians. Well, he was talking about how he had risen to the third heaven. This man had such a relationship with God, hallelujah, that he exalted up to the third heavens. And he said he was in the presence of the Lord, and there were some things that were spoken that he couldn't even order down here. So if he wasn't careful, he could have gotten a big head. Y'all don't want to talk to me right there. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Paul said, look here. Satan had to begin to buffet him. That's right. That word buffet means to punch. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So he began to punch on Paul. He had to, he had to hit Paul in areas that made Paul feel like he was weak. Yes. But God said, he talked to God. He said, Lord, can you please remove this thing? Because I'm tired of being buffeted by Satan. And God said, no, I'm going to keep you meek. He said, because my grace is sufficient. So some of the things in our life, we got to go through. Mm -hmm. Why are we always praying when trouble comes for trouble to be removed? Mm -hmm. And never learn a lesson we need out of that trouble. Yes. There's some chaos in your life that's brought there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because without that chaos, you never would get to that relationship that you desire with God. You will never seek him like you need to seek him. He said, I sought the Lord. I searched for him. I looked for him to change the situation, but the Lord would not touch it. Verse 9 say, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. Don't you know God's grace is enough? Somebody say, but God. But his grace. My grace is sufficient for thee. He said, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Y'all don't, don't follow me right now. But he said his strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, because you're weak right now, God is stronger in your life. Amen. Because you couldn't do it without God. Amen. Is there anything in your life you want God to take away? You just, you just pray and God just remove this thing. And it may not be in you. It may be in someone.
someone who's harassing you. Yes. Y'all ain't never had a hater. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't never had someone who was an adversary to you. Always seem to be blocking your path and getting closer to God. Someone that always get on your nerve. Y'all must not have nobody get on your nerves. <laughs> Hallelujah. And just seeing like that person always seem to come around. When you were most happy, they show up. Hallelujah. And you be praying, Lord, remove them out of my way. But God has allowed that to keep you grace, to keep grace in your life. He allowed that to come so you can stay humble and seek him because there are some things God is trying to work out of you. Yes. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to walk around snakes and still have peace. Yes. I know y'all got a fear, yes. but fear is false evidence that appear real. Don't y'all know fear is not even real? It's a future thought. You're in a present situation and you think about something in the future that may or may not ever happen. So you're creating this out of your imagination. Oh, come on. Y'all don't want to talk up in here today. He said, my script is made perfect in weakness. In other words, God can show up. Hallelujah. Because now you have humbled yourself. He showed up in your situation. The peace you've been seeking, God can give it to you now. But grace, have you ever messed up in your life? Yes, sir. Have you ever done someone wrong in your life? Yes. And uh, they forgave you? Huh? Why can't we do the same for others? If you have been shown grace, if you, have, you deserve to be punished for what you've done to someone, but yet still they showed you mercy. You don't deserve their forgiveness, but yet still they forgave you. We should, as Christians, do the same. Yes. We got too many Christians that got bitterness on the inside mm -hmm. because they've been rejected on the outside. Mm. And because you've been rejected, you project your rejection onto somebody else. Mm -hmm. And they deserve forgiveness just like God forgave us. Yes. We should forgive others. Yes. See, the thing I like about grace so much it was paid with a price. Anybody know what that price was? Jesus. It was the blood of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. It's that blood that makes us whole. Yes. It's that blood that heals us. Yes. It's that blood that restores us. It's yes. that blood that redeems us. Hallelujah. So thank God for his grace. Yes. If he did not send Jesus down on this earth, hallelujah, to die for our sin, yes. oh, how wretched we would be. Yes. We tried it on our own. He's the most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity than the powers of Christ may rest upon me. So, therefore, we need this grace in our life. We need God's grace in our life each and every day. And we need to give that grace to others. Yes, you've been hurt. Yes, you've been rejected. Yes, you don't think the person deserves to be forgiven. But you forgave and you are forgiven. And you should give the same to others. No matter how cruel they have may, may have been to you, no matter how bad they may have hurt you, you still need to show grace. You know, we are we are ambassadors for Christ on this earth. Yes, amen. The Bible tells us in Genesis that we are created in his image, mm -hmm. in his likeness. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So in his image, in his likeness, is grace. Yes. And we need to show that same grace that God showed us. We need to give it to others. Amen. See, what happened is, as Christians, we, we, we get forgiveness from God, but we don't go back and give um, forgiveness to others. Okay. Yeah. We need to find some people that we know we've done wrong to and ask them to forgive us. Yeah. Some of y'all need to go and seek some people. Some of y'all need to call up some people. Y'all just avoiding them <laughs> or ignoring them. Jesus. But you need to reach out and give them grace too. Amen. Because through the grace you've given, you can draw them to God. Oh, I forgot. We, we, are, we have to sin. Romans 3 and 23 say, For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So in other words, we all deserve his punishment, but he's given us grace instead. Yes. You should shout right there. Amen. You should be thankful right there. Amen. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is, yeah. is death, right? Yes. But grace came upon it. Right. Oh, grace stepped in and said they deserve to die. Yes, they deserve it because they sinned. But I'm going to step in and cover them. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you.
about you. I cried the first time I, I came across grace. Because rightfully, I deserve to be punished. I don't know about you, but to walk in the courtroom knowing you're guilty and someone step up and say, I'll take the punishment. Oh, hallelujah. Or the judge to say, you know what? I, I, I'm going to vacate his sentence. I'm going to pardon it all. I don't know about you. You know you got a life sentence, or in this case, a death sentence. And the judge redeemed you with life. That's what Jesus did. He redeemed us with life. I ain't getting too many amens. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because I guess you don't appreciate grace. I do. He does. Thank you, God. It's getting what you don't deserve. You don't deserve God's grace. You don't deserve God's forgiveness. But he loves us so much, he yes. gives it to us anyway. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You ever had a child that didn't do right, but yet still they wanted something? Mm -hmm. And you applied grace to it? Yes. You didn't look at the bad grades at the time. You didn't look at the back talking you at the time. You didn't look at that cruel look they gave you. You didn't look at that that smart that spark or that sarcasm they gave you. And you stepped in, even though they don't deserve it. You gave it to them anyhow. Because of your grace, they look at you differently. Hello, grace got a way of bringing people out of bitterness. Y'all want to talk to me up in here today. Amen. Grace got a way of bringing you out of hurt. Yes. Amen. Grace got a, a way of bringing you out of rejection. Yes. Yes. I don't deserve it, Lord. I know I don't deserve it, but I thank God for it. For all that I've done. The many times I curse God. Some of you may not admit it, but you cursed God before. You, you, you hated on God one time. In my life, I hated on God. I knew him, but I hated him because I didn't like the way my life was going. But yet still, he still loved me. Even though I didn't have a relationship with him, he still loved me. Thank you, and he still showed me grace because he kept me around. He kept me alive until I came into a right relationship with him. You just don't know how grace is saving people. Hallelujah. It's like having a sword in your hand and you can cut the head off, but you decide not to. Even though they've done cruelty to you, but yet still, you show grace. Do you think that uh, David deserved grace? He committed adultery. He conspired to murder a man and did murder him. He lied to cover it all up. But yet still, he deserved punishment. Mm -hmm. God gave him mercy. Yes, he, did. he didn't deserve God's forgiveness, but God gave him grace. Yes. And he became someone God said, a man after my oh. own heart. See what grace can do? Grace can change some folks. Yeah. 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 Oh, Lord. Yeah. That was my point right there. Yeah. That was a shot right there. Yeah. That was the breakthrough right there. Hallelujah, that because God showed such grace. Yeah. Late old David became the greatest king. Yes, yes amen. 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 One that people say had a heart after God. Yes. I mean, God's saying this. Wow. This man got a heart after me. Wow. Because he showed him grace when he didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes through your hurt, you see people differently. Yeah. But if you put on the grace of God, Hallelujah. It can transform how you see people yes. and draw them. Yes. Your worst enemy could become your best friend. That's right. With grace, yes. God can draw us. With grace, God can bring us out. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I deserve punishment, Lord. But I thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know, if in the middle of your sin, you could have died. Mm -hmm. You could have been yes. separated from God. During the time when you did not have a relationship with him, True. you could have died. And guess what? Hell would have been your home, yes. whether you accept it or not. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't know about it doesn't uh, stop it from being true. Amen. Just for the fact that we didn't know that all that sin was leading us down a path to destruction doesn't stop the path to destruction. Doesn't stop the destruction. But God's grace covered us. 
He said they don't know right now. They don't understand right now. So he applied grace until you got to a point where you came into the knowledge of God. And you realize that you was hurting he who loved you more than anybody. Yes. Don't you know God loved you more than your parents do? Mm -hmm. Now your mama and your dad, yes. your sister and your brother, your husband and your wife, he loves you more than all that. He said, I love you before you love me. That's right. Hallelujah. Even before you knew him, mm -hmm. he loved you. In your sinful way, he loved you. Thank you. What a God. I'm glad God don't love like we love. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, you know, we love you when everything's going right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Between spouses, hallelujah. As long as everything is going well, I love you, baby. You know, that bald head of yours. <laughs> hallelujah. But the moment things ain't going right, then that bald head becomes scornful. <laughs> Start talking, you take on a different meaning all together. Before bald head was cute. <laughs> now bald head is uh, your old bald head. <laughs> it's amazing. Before, oh, your old bald head. <laughs> the tone has changed. Yeah, yeah. I ain't seen my wife say that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But thank God for grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there's a lot of things we're saying in our heart. We're just not saying it with our lips. We're not verbalizing it. Mm. But we're thinking it. Yes. And we're even acting upon it. But God showed us grace. Hallelujah. He could act upon showing you a, a, a punishment, but he didn't. Yeah. He could have destroyed you, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. Thank God for grace. Amen. Look at someone say, thank God for grace. Thank, thank God, God for grace. grace. He said, being justified freely, in verse 24 of, of Romans, third chapter. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you that he gives it freely. The grace is freely given unto us. Yes. It's nothing you have to work for. Because yes. some people think that, you know, coming to church, I get more grace because I'm coming to church. No, well, because I'm doing my Christian duties, I get more grace. Yes. Hallelujah. This grace is freely given to you. It's nothing you earn. It's nothing you work for. Hallelujah. So don't go to God in prayer and say, well, Lord, I've done all these things. It's up to him. It's freely given to you. You know, even Hezekiah went there on that precept of saying, you know, I did all these works, Lord. I call you into remembrance all these things. But God had the choice whether he given grace or not. And he did apply the grace to it. He said, 15 more years I add unto your life. Mm -hmm. That was grace. He's supposed to die, but yet still God gave him grace. Yeah. We have all sinned. And I wish we would look at it from that perspective. Is that we have all sinned. We have all done something wrong. But most of the time I find that people who have sinned or done wrong. Are the one that's judged the hardest. Or the harshest. If you cheated on your spouse. Then your spouse cheated on you. Why are you so hard on them when you did it? And you lied on your best friend. Mm -hmm. Then when your best friend lie on you, why are you so hard to uh, understand or forgive them? Mm -hmm. It seems like now it takes on a stronger or a, a bigger presence because it was done to you. But when it's done to somebody else, it's less. Mm -hmm. But if it's done to you, it's more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like they should have known better. Well, you should have known better too. Okay. Show grace. Show mercy. God gives us new mercy and new grace each day. I don't know about you. I wake up with that scripture on every morning. I wake up with new mercy and new grace. And I wake up happy. I wake up shouting. I wake up thankful that it's new grace and new mercy. That he ain't applying the mercy from yesterday. He ain't applying the grace from yesterday. Hallelujah. I need new grace. I need new mercy. Because if you use the old stuff, it might be all the way to the end. Wow. It might be about to run out. Thank you. I need some new mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. I can understand why Jesus say if you uh, if you if your friend offended you, if someone offended you, forgive them seven times. 
is you got to apply new grace and new mercy each time. Because if not, you'll keep holding on to the last thing they did. See, some of us don't know how to let stuff go. I'm going to clap on that. <laughs> some of us don't know how to let stuff go. But grace teaches us how to let it go. When Jesus was betrayed, grace still stepped in. When all his disciples ran away and forsake him, grace still was covering him. He didn't hold it against them. He didn't say, well, you know, when I come back from the grave, I'm not going to come by your house. I ain't stopping by to talk to you. Because I remember when we was in the garden and you ran away. I saw it all. Thank God for grace. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to talk to me any today. Praise God. But grace. Look at someone say, but grace. But grace. Judas could have received God's grace. What happens is when people don't freely receive it, it brings condemnation upon them. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that Judas could have been saved. He could have gotten saved if he stayed alive. Mm -hmm. Because God's grace is not limited. Right. Amen. The Bible does not say that the blood only covers certain folks. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want to talk right there. Yeah. See, I know you can be all uh, theological about this thing, but I'm telling you, if he would stay alive and he would have asked for forgiveness, God would have had to forgive him. Yes. If not, he's picking and choosing who the blood could be applied to. And that's how some of us are. We're picking and choosing who the blood can be applied to. But we have all sinned and come short of his glory. The worst drug dealer, the, the worst sex offender, still, hallelujah, it's God's grace they're still around. Yes. Amen. Yes. He's still giving them a chance. Yes, he is. Hello. Oh, yeah. You might ain't kill somebody, but you kill them with your tongue. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says you hate your brother, that's worse than murder. Mm -hmm. But God's grace, till we come to that revelation or understanding of God's love, and we apply it to our situation. Yes. Things will never change. Yes. Yes. We need his grace. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So I have to keep asking God for new mercy, new grace each day. Because yes. if not, I'll be looking at you from yesterday's perspective. Yes. Amen. You ever notice when you haven't talked to someone in a while, and then they come and talk to you? Mm -hmm. They base it on where you were the last time they talked right. So they pick up conversation based on your past instead of where you are now. So I have to apply new mercy because if not, I'll be looking at you from your old ways instead of your new ways. What a God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. That each new day he look at you differently. Yes. Thank you, you fell short yesterday. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Thank God he ain't holding it to your charge. Amen. He applied a new mercy on it. The day is the day. Hallelujah. The day is the day that Patricia Jenkins is going to, going to love her husband like she never loved him before. Oh, nice. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for the answer, prayer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day she's going to arrive. Hallelujah. You're going to realize he's a king to her. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I'm looking for that new mercy every day because we never know when we're going to get to that point where God says, yes, you arrived in that area. Jesus, thank you. But there's other areas you need to arrive in. Amen. We should be growing each and every day. We have to show God love each and every day because we demonstrate we're an ambassadors on this earth. And we have to walk in the ambassadorship of grace and mercy each and every day. No matter how many times people hurt you, forsake you, abandon you, reject you, or whatever they do to you, you still have to walk in grace and mercy. You know Jesus came back for those who hung him on the cross. The one that persecuted him. The one that laughed and say uh, crucify him. A week earlier, they say, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. They changed on him, but yet still, he saw the change, but he didn't change. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah.
sometimes, hallelujah, we see the pattern, but we have to have grace upon the pattern. That one day, this is going to change. Yes. Hello. Amen. If my mother was still alive here, she, she had to have grace at some time in her life on my life. Because she had to see my life at the time when I was that drunk on the corner. Right. That lie, that whole mother, that, that gambler, all those things that I was doing. I'm cussing God, cursing everyone. Hallelujah. Didn't care about anything. Didn't think my life was going to amount to anything. But one day, I'm saying one day, I met this man named Jesus. Hallelujah. I came in encounter with him, and he transformed my life. And all of a sudden, I went from darkness to light, and my mom saw a difference in me. Hallelujah. And it drew her closer to God. Because now she know God is real. If he can change that hardhead boy right there, he can change anybody. And somebody think you hard head. Yes. Hallelujah. They want to see God grace working in your life. Yes. They want to see God mercy on your life. Yes. And let him mercy and grace bring you up out of your sinful ways. Yes. What a God we serve. Yes. She didn't live long enough to see me in a pulpit. Well, she saw me preaching. She didn't live long enough to see me when I started this, this church and this ministry. But she saw, she lived long enough to see my life change. Amen. To see Amen. God answer prayers. Amen. That God applied grace. I'm pretty sure there's many nights my mom said, Lord, have grace on him. Amen. Sometimes you don't know what to pray. Pray for grace on that person. Lord, have grace on them. Yes. Show them your mercy. Please, Lord. I know it's a greater person on the inside. Amen. Have mercy. Until they come to that understanding yes. that you are God and God alone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I just feel when we encourage you in that word, but grace. Mm -hmm. Because there's no more to be said than God's grace alone for what he done on the cross. So the next time you're looking, sometimes you may look through hurt eyes, rejection eyes, but God is always looking through grace eyes. And when you look that way, when you transform your mind, the Bible says you must renew your mind daily. Yes. Yes. And when you renew your mind daily, renew your mind with new grace. Because yes. it took a while for you to get to where you are right now. True. Just be real. This ain't showed up overnight. Mm -hmm. And even at the point you are now, you still got some work to do. True. Hello. Yes. Hallelujah. Paul still had some work to do. He was being buffed by Satan. And he wanted to be taken away, but he still had to realize that God said his grace was sufficient. Yes. Amen. Some things you just got to go through. Yes. And some things are going to stay with you until you leave this earth. Mm -hmm. To keep you humble and keep you dependent on God mm -hmm. and trust in God in all situations Amen. while you're standing up. Join hands with someone.